All right, so I was thinking that I would start a reading vlog for this week. So I just have a couple things to do. I'll let you guys know when I'm about to start my first book of the week. So I landed on the book that I'm going to be starting today, and that is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. If you guys recently watched my book haul, you would know that I just bought this entire series, and I'm going to be rereading it because I originally only read the first three books when I was in like first or second grade. And so that's what we're gonna be doing. All right. I realize the lighting is terrible, but um, I just wanted to check in with you guys. Um, it's been a while since we last spoke. I ate dinner, we watched It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and then I watched the fourth episode of The Summer I Turned Pretty. The ending wrecked me. I don't know how they're gonna take it from here. And now I'm just gonna get back, back into Harry Potter. I'm about halfway through, maybe a little less. I'm hoping I'll finish it tonight, but I wouldn't count on it necessarily. This is fairly irrelevant, but Professor Ur McGonagall is such a queen. I love her so much. Harry is so petty with Draco. I mean, it's amazing. Oh my god. This book is so good. And I'm noticing, like, I read this book when I was in first grade. And I forgot so much like so many of the tiny intricate things or maybe they just like went right over my head because I was so young because like I said my mom raised me on this stuff so like this was the main literature in our house and it's just so incredible to see how much more I appreciate it now that I'm like older and can understand everything that's going on and it's Amazing. Okay, I realize I look like a mess, but I just got to the part where Harry is looking in the mirror and he sees his family for the first time. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I just finished the book. I don't know what to rate it just because I want to rate it five stars. Objectively, it's not a five star book. But for me, and for nostalgia reasons, it's definitely a five star book. All of these books are definitely going to be five star books for me. They make me giddy like i enjoyed this so much i think i'm honestly gonna start the chamber of secrets tomorrow because i don't know i'm excited to read them why wouldn't i read it if i'm excited to read it but it's currently 12 30 or 12 45 in the morning so i think i'm gonna go to bed i might watch some hulu and knit as i wind down i just wanted to let you guys know and i'll see you guys tomorrow morning bye all right it's been a very interesting morning to say the least now I'm just looking forward to starting the second Harry Potter book. I finished the first one last night and I think I already told you guys that it's definitely a five star read for me. 
objectively, I know the book isn't perfect, but this book has such, this series has such a sentimental, sentimental and nostalgic feeling for me that I can't imagine I won't rate any of these five stars. This one is a little longer, but just by like 50 pages, so I think I can get this done today too because I don't have too much to do. I have to cook dinner, but we're having wings, so that's pretty easy for me to make. But I hope I'll finish it around 10 p.m. tonight, hopefully. And then I can get started on The Prisoner of Azkaban. And if you guys didn't watch my book haul, you would you wouldn't know that when I read this series when I was younger I stopped reading after the third book just because I think that book is like 450 pages and then the next book The Goblet of Fire it is long like I think it's over 700 pages and there was not enough money in the world to convince second grade me to read a 700 page book it just simply wasn't gonna happen all right, so let's get started. I remember, well, obviously I know the plot of the book. I've watched the movies, I've read the book. But like I said with the last one, there was so much I didn't remember. Like, so much I didn't remember about this series. And so I'm interested to see what else I didn't remember about this book as well. I just got to the 100 page mark and I'm realizing that they didn't make Gilderoy Lockhart nearly as insufferable as he was in the books, in the movies. Like, he's horrendous. He diminishes Harry's importance to the wizarding world as though what he is matters more and it's so weird i don't know let's get back to it okay so i am gonna keep reading for a while but i'll check it in later all right so i'm back from my break i took a little nap if I'm being honest because I was really really tired like I was falling asleep reading and I'm um, just about to restart I'm on page 126 so maybe about a third a third maybe more of the book I just passed the 200 page mark which is also the start of the Polly Juice potion chapter so I'm two thirds of the way through the book. So I, if I keep focused, I should have it done by 10, 15, cause it's 7, 15 right now. And I read about 50 minutes, 50 pages an hour. But first I have to turn on the AC because it's hot in here. Oh my God, they're horrendous. Don't get me wrong, I'm a Slytherin, but the way they're portrayed is so horrible. Just like the way they portray Hufflepuffs is awful. Like, the new password for the common room is pure blood. How awful can you be? Okay, so I definitely didn't remember this from when I read the book first. So they're talking like Harry just got the diary and he's like confused thing about like why would he keep it he knows it's a blank diary yada 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 and it says and while Harry while Harry was sure he had never heard the name TM Riddle before it still seemed to mean something to him almost as though Riddle was a friend he had when he was very small and had half forgotten Oh my god. Oh my god. This is insane. I hope for 
Professor McGonagall so much. <laughs> So good. I did just finish the book. And on principle, I don't read books immediately after reading them because I always go back and change it. But for this series, I don't really care because I know they're all five stars for me. So, a solid five stars. And I finished. It's just about. It's just about 9:40. So I actually finished about 35 minutes earlier than I expected I would. I think I'm gonna start Crazy Mary Mask Man tonight just because it's longer. I think it's like around 450 pages. So I feel like, I don't know. I have a really busy day tomorrow. So I don't know that I'll be able to finish that one tomorrow. But if I get a head start on it tonight, it'll definitely make it easier. I think I'm definitely gonna do that. Yeah. Alright, so I got about I got exactly 50 pages into this book. But I'm my brain is kind of fried. And I have to be up early tomorrow. But I will check in with you guys tomorrow as much as I can to see how much I get through this tomorrow. So I will check in with you guys tomorrow. Good night. I'm just about to start reading Prisoner of Azkaban. Last night I got to the part where they like just bring him to the Leaky Cauldron. So He's out of the Dursley's house, bless Jesus. And now he's just like learning about like what it's like to be by yourself and actually have autonomy and being able to like choose things because he's always been at the Dursleys who like told him what to do or at school where again, they told him what to do. So let's just get started. Also, I don't have any makeup on because I decided not to do it until later today before we have to leave for dinner. But I'm really excited to get more into this book because if you know the series well, you'll know that Sirius Black is introduced in this book and he's my favorite character in the whole series. So I'm, at a, I'm reading a scene where he's just wandering around uh, Diagon Alley and he's at the bookstore and He's seeing a book that's with the rest of the divination books and it's talking about how to like see death omens and you see the silhouette of like a giant black dog and I knew I know in the movie they show the symbol everywhere like it's in the, in the clouds while he's playing Quidditch it's in his teacup in divination class like it's all super symbolic and stuff but it's never explained why. Like you never saw the scene in the movie and I feel like that would have been so much more helpful than to just say, oh, it looks like the dog that Harry saw by the bushes in the beginning of the movie. Like it's insane. Okay, so it's been a while. It's around 4.45. I've gotten this far in and I just got past the part where they win the Quidditch Cup and I have to stop reading unfortunately because if I could read straight through I would finish it because it'll only take me about two hours to finish the rest of the book but I gotta get ready for dinner so I probably won't be back till around maybe 9, 10 o'clock. But I definitely am going to finish this tonight. So I'll make sure to check in with you when I get back from our family dinner. Okay, so I've gotten ready for dinner, obviously. But I have like 45 minutes till we have to leave, so I'm just going to read till then. <laughs> I know the scene 
in the middle where like Professor Trelawney has her really weird vision and she kind of scares the hell out of Harry. It's kind of weird in the movie, but I love it so much. All right, so I just got back from dinner. It is 9.35 and I got this much left in the book so I'm definitely gonna finish it tonight. I might start a Goblet of Fire just because I really want to finish that tomorrow and I think it's better if I get a jump start on it because it's this thick. So I think I'll have to read all day like starting at like 8 a.m. Let's get into it. <laughs> Oh my gosh so oh my gosh i love sirius so much they're talking about or peter is trying to convince ron to be on his side he's like i was a good pet i was a good rat yada 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 and sirius says if you made a better rat than a human it's not much to boast about peter <laughs> okay so i'm at the park where Harry conjures a Patronus that like takes away all those Dementors while they're like trying to kill Harry and Sirius and after all the Dementors are gone and the Patronus comes back to Harry and he's like trying to like see what animal it is he realizes like he realizes it's a stag and then he's, and then he says, prongs. Oh my god. Let me just show you what I wrote. I can't, oh my god, I can't believe it. Oh my god. we all know Harry's aunt and uncle hate him and they treat him horribly and he had, he just got a letter from his from Sirius who is his godfather and he just got off the train station and Vernon's like that better not be another form for me to sign and Harry's like it, no it's not it's a letter from my godfather and Vernon is like you don't have a godfather and then Harry responds, yes I have. He was my mom and dad's best friend. He's a convicted murderer, but he's broken out of a wizard prison and he's on the run. He likes to keep in touch with me though. Keep up on my news, check if I'm happy. Oh my God, he definitely told that to them so that they're horrified of him. part of the book so three out of seven down now I only have the longest ones left all the others were like under 450 pages but now all of these are I think they're all over 500 pages also I realized while I was reading the end of the other book that I definitely started this book because I remember vividly reading the scene in the beginning that is a dream for Harry but it's like actually happening in real life where Peter Pettigrew is like taking care of Voldemort in that house and then they kill that muggle. I I don't know if you know what I'm talking about Yeah, this chapter the riddle house. I Definitely remember reading that when I was younger I sincerely hope That I don't need to give spoiler warnings for this. This series has been out since 
I think the last book came out over a decade ago. So I'm really not gonna apologize for spoilers. Good morning, y'all. It is about eight o'clock in the morning. I think just woke up. Yes, my sister-in-law just dropped her puppy off with us while she's at work. Uh, I'm just gonna get started reading because I also really need to turn the AC on because it's hot in here because I didn't turn it on at all yesterday. So I'm just gonna get started. Oh my god. So I just got to the part where the Weasleys are picking him up by food powder at the Dursley's house. So obviously they're going ballistic that this is happening. And they're just, they're like starting to leave. And Harry's like, well, bye then. And then like, they don't respond at all. And then Mr. Weasley is like, Harry said goodbye to you. Didn't you hear him? And then Harry's like, it doesn't matter. Honestly, I don't care. And then Mr. Weasley is like, you are going to see your nephew till next summer. Surely you're going to say goodbye. <laughs> I love Mr. Weasley. And I'm so upset that this was left out of the movie. This would have been so good. <laughs> All right, so it hasn't been long since we last spoke, maybe two hours, it's 10 o'clock now. I took some time to get ready and everything and I just reached the 60 page mark. We're at the part where they're talking about the Quidditch World Cup and how England kind of fumbled the bag with getting to the Quidditch World Cup, which is why they're not in it, and it's the Irish. So let's just get back into reading. <laughs> so, I'm not going to give spoiler warnings for this, again, this series has been out forever. So, they just met up with the Diggeries at the Port Key, and... And... Cedric's father is meeting Harry for the first time, and he's like, Cedric's talked about you, of course, told us all about playing against you last year. I said to him, said, that'll be something you tell your grandchildren that will. You beat Harry Potter. But as we know, he dies in this book. All right, so it's just about 4.45, just over halfway through. And I think I'm gonna take a break for a little while just because it's kind of getting taxing. Like I'm starting to having to force myself to read. So I think I'm gonna maybe take a break for an hour or so, make dinner, maybe watch some line on my TV and knit some just so I can want to get back into this. I mean, I definitely still want to. I could keep reading if I really wanted to, but I'll be forcing myself to read. I just got to the part where they went down into the kitchen and they met up with Dobby and Winky and I can't believe they left all that out of the movie. Like, it's so much that they left out. It makes me so mad. That's probably what I'll do actually. I'll probably watch Prisoner of Azkaban. But this is the first really long one, so I figured there was going to be plenty of stuff that wasn't in the movie, obviously, because it's much, it's twice the size of the other books. So obviously there's going to be a lot more in this book than the rest of the books that wasn't in the movies. So I'm really interested to see what else happens. But yeah, I'll check in with you guys when I start reading it. So I was gone a little longer than I thought it would be. I left you guys at around 4.40, 4.45. It's now 7.20. But I took a nap and then I cooked dinner. So yeah, let's get back into reading because now I'm very much revitalized after my nap and I'll probably be up really late. So. There's no point 
not starting to read. I am just past the halfway point. I'm at the chapter called The Unexpected Past. So I imagine they're gonna learn about the Yule Ball. Ah, that's what I suspect. Yeah. I was right. She's just started talking about the Yule Ball. <laughs> oh, okay. So, I guess the unexpected task is to find himself a dance partner or a date to the dance. <laughs> so, as we all know, Ginny's been in love with Harry since she met him. Like, it's so obvious. And so, there, he's talking about how he asked Cho to go to the dance with her, and Ginny was there. And then he says, I asked her to go to me just now, and she told me. And then he says, Ginny had suddenly stopped smiling. Oh my god. Ron is so stupid sometimes. Because again, he is trying to ask Hermione now, because he's like, well, you're a girl. And then he's accusing her of lying that she had a date. And he, she was like, oh, did I? Just because it's taken you three years to notice Ron doesn't mean no one else has spotted I'm a girl. Hey guys. It's been a while since we last spoke. Last time I checked in, I was just about over halfway done with the Goblet of Fire. I was able to finish that last night around 2 a.m. and 2? No, it was closer to 1. But I've had a really busy day and my husband and I just got back from going out to get dinner and ice cream and now I've only started this much of the Order of the Phoenix. I'm really worried about reading this just because I know Umbridge and hearing everyone doubt and like undermine Harry and Dumbledore for a whole 900 pages is going to be really hard for me because it was hard in like the last 30 pages of Goblet of Fire. So I'm not really looking forward to that but the faster I get through it the faster I can get on to the Half-Blood Prince. And there's already been so much in this book that wasn't in the movie, and it makes me so mad. We missed out on so much, but it's fine. I have a new set of tabs because I've noticed that my current set is not enough. Like, there are too many characters because I do tabs by characters, not by, like, what's happening or, like, moods or anything. I do them by characters. Let's get back into it. I just got to the part where the order just showed up to Harry's house to pick him up and bring him back to the Black's uh, house. Alright, it's been a while since we last spoke. We last spoke on Friday evening when I just started this book. And I read only like 50 pages before I was like, I'm not doing this. I'm going to bed because I think after Friday and reading a 750 page book in a day, I was just burnt out. Like I, I couldn't do it. So I'm glad I took that day to rest for the most part. I only read like two hours. And then yesterday we went to one of my husband's friends birthday parties and I'm not really friends with any of them so I just read the whole time so I was able to get pretty far I started reading some today but I haven't gotten too far in I'm at page 626 of 870 I just got to the part where Dumbledore like escaped because they found out about Dumbledore's army and no, I'm just kidding back into it. I'm definitely gonna finish it today. I hope I'm gonna start the Half Blood Prince today as well because that's the shortest book in the rest of the series. And 
that's my favorite movie in the series so i'm really interested to see how it compares with the plot lines what are the differences and all that kind of stuff so, let's just get into it reading the end of this book while listening to the reputation album is iconic it makes it so much better when the ministry and umbridge get theirs it's so amazing i love it hello all I feel like it's been a while since we last spoke, but I think it's actually only been less than a day. So, yesterday when I last spoke with you guys, I was finishing this book, Order of the Phoenix, which is the fifth book in the Harry Potter series. Now, I am about to start the sixth book which is the Half-Blood Prince, and I'm really interested to see how it will compare to the movie because that is my favorite movie. The plot points, the new potions professor whose name is currently escaping me, but I think it'll be really interesting and really good. Obviously, all these books are really good. This book, I don't think I talked much to you guys about the end of it, but I remember sitting on the couch downstairs genuinely sobbing <sighs> sobbing when Sirius dies like gasping for air hysterically crying sobbing <sighs> and that was really hard so I imagine the end of this book when Dumbledore dies will be just as bad, if not worse. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm getting emotional about this, but it was really hard to read. So, I'm excited to start this one though, especially since I'm ecstatic that Umbridge won't be in it. <laughs> like, that was probably the hardest part of this whole book to get through because she's just god awful but there were so many moments because the villain was so prevalent rather than Voldemort where he pops up at the end only where everyone was basically sassing her especially Dumbledore and McGonagall they had the best moments and I was like cackling about how they were responding to her about certain things Anywho, I think I'm gonna put on a vinyl and I'm gonna do Evermore and get started on Half Blood Prince. Let's go. <laughs> I've never seen anyone portray a prime minister as an idiot. This is interesting. Prime Minister is saying to Fudge, now see here Fudge, you've got to do something, it's your responsibility as the Minister of Magic. And then he, Quinn, Fudge responds, my dear Prime Minister, you can't honestly think I'm still Minister of Magic after all of this. I was sacked three days ago. <laughs> this feels... My record's scratching, but it feels so good to have him out after everything he did to Harry and Dumbledore last book. Oh my god. Okay, so the Dumbledore just got to the Dursleys to like pick up Harry and Vernon is about to say something rude as he always is and he's like, I don't mean to be rude. And then Dumbledore finishes his sentence and he's like, this is Dumbledore talking now, and he says, Yet, sadly, accidental, accidental rudeness occurs alarmingly often, 
Best to say nothing at all, my dear man. <laughs> okay, again. So they're about to leave and Harry's like, aren't we leaving? And Dumbledore's like, there are a couple things we need to discuss, but we shall trespass on your aunt and uncle's hospitality only a little longer. And then Vernon responds, you will, will you? And then <laughs> Dumbledore simply just responds, yes, I shall. Sirius left everything he owned to Harry. <sighs> I can't believe I forgot that this is the book where Harry and Ginny kind of like fall in love. Like, I completely forgot and I'm so excited because we're getting like crumbs and we're already getting so much more of Ginny's personality and she's very clearly going to be a prevalent character throughout this book. I'm just really looking forward to it because she's amazing. Okay, it's just about 1.30. I got to page 2.10 and I'm gonna read in bed for a little longer but oh my I'm gonna be going to bed real soon. So I just wanna say goodnight and I'll check in tomorrow. Good morning y'all, it is roughly 10 a.m. I woke up maybe an hour ago and got ready. I got to chapter 11 last night, which is page 217. I'm definitely gonna finish the book today. Hopefully I can get started on the Deathly Hallows as well. And yeah, I'm gonna keep you guys posted. Okay, so I'm at the part where Harry's starting to get jealous and I love it so much. He's talking about how Ron and Harry just caught Dean and Ginny ah, kissing and <laughs> Where is it? He says, It was as though something large and scaly erupted into life in Harry's stomach. Clawing at his insides, hot blood seemed to flood his brain so that all thought was extinguished, replaced by a savage urge to jinx Dean into a jelly. They are so good together, and I know I've heard so many times that the movies crucify. Ginny's personality and it's so true she is so full of life and personality in the books and it makes me so mad that that's what we were given for Ginny in the movies hey guys I just got back from dinner with my husband and I'm just about to start reading again I got to page 639 earlier and I took a break to sleep because I was incredibly tired. I just got to the part where he and Jenny are finally together and I love it so much. I was like so excited. Anyhow, I only have about 100 pages left. I'm really nervous which will only take me about two hours to finish and then I'm definitely gonna start The Deathly Hallows tonight as well because that's like a 750 page book so if I start it tonight I can finish it tomorrow so, yeah I'll keep you guys updated and I'm also gonna be playing some records while I listen I think after I finish fine line I'm gonna play speak now Taylor's version so yeah let's get started so Harry just learned, learned that Snape overheard Professor Trelawney's prophecy about Harry. And so obviously this is a problem because the entire force of Death, Death, Death Eaters and Voldemort are after that prophecy that was broken and Snape may know it 
because he overheard Professor Trelawney's interview with Dumbledore 16 years ago. I just got to the part where they just saw the dark mark over Hogwarts. And I know Dumbledore is gonna die soon. <sighs> Let's keep breathing. <sighs> oh. I'm not doing great. Hagrid and Harry just put out the fire that the Death Eaters caused at Hagrid's house, shack, whatever you want to call it. And then Hagrid says, it's not too bad. Nothing Dumbledore can't fix. said Dumbledore might know something that would work though. Where is he? So, if you don't know, Dumbledore had a phoenix. And Harry just said somewhere out in the darkness a phoenix was singing in a way that Harry had never heard before. A stricken lament of terrible beauty and Harry felt as he had felt about Phoenix song before that the music was inside him not without it was his own grief turned magically to song that echoed across the grounds and through the castle windows <laughs> He breaks up with Jenny because he wants to keep her safe. Okay, so <sighs> I realize I look like a mess. My mascara has fallen down my face. But this book was exceptionally good. Like, I, it's definitely, it's definitely my favorite in the series. Um, I'm distraught over how this book ended. Um, definitely gonna start Deathly Hallows tonight. Definitely. And hopefully I'll finish it tomorrow as well. Also, I love Harry so much. Like, I mean, I'm mad he broke up with Ginny because he wanted to keep her safe. But Ginny responded in the best way possible. She said, well, I can't say I'm surprised. I knew this would happen in the end. I knew you wouldn't be happy unless you were hunting Voldemort. Maybe that's why I like you so much. Anywho. And then, the Minister of Magic came up to him again at Dumbledore's funeral to talk about what they were doing off Hogwarts grounds the night he was killed. And to ask him to like, pretend he works for the ministry so that the, like moral, morale is high or whatever and he was like no don't look told me not to like i'm not telling you anything and then he said 
well the minister said like he's gone now Harry like Dumbledore's gone and Harry responds he will only be gone from the school when none here are loyal to him and then Dumbledore not Dumbledore the minister is like my dear boy even my Dumbledore cannot return from the and then Harry cuts him off and he's like I'm not saying he can you wouldn't understand but I've got nothing to tell you and then they like have another weird exchange and then the minister starts saying I see you are and once again Harry cuts him off and he's like Dumbledore's man through and through that's right this is all I have left. I realize I literally look crazy. I'm going to take my makeup off, obviously, and I'm going to start this book. I hope to get like 200 pages in, maybe read till about 2 a.m. But we'll see. I'm very nervous, but I'm also intrigued to see how much of the book was in the movies because, as you know, there are two movies, The Deathly Hallows, so I imagine that it should be pretty accurate to the book, or it should be, but I know that there's still going to be a bunch left out. Anywho let's take my makeup off and i will be with you shortly all right i have cleaned my face off as you can see and i look much more normal i'm ready to start this book and i'm very very nervous about what's going to be happening and how i'm going to be feeling about this book it is 759 pages, which will take me about a day and a half. Hopefully it'll just take me tonight and tomorrow, because I will spend most of today, tomorrow reading this book. Hopefully. Okay. I mean, I probably could stay up all night and read if I really wanted to. But that wouldn't be wise of me to do so. Okay. Let's get started, and I will keep you posted on my thoughts throughout the book. Oh my god. When, they're, when Harry's trying to explain to all the Dursleys and stuff about how they're leaving, and then Dudley says, why isn't he coming with us about Harry? And he's like, Vernon responds and he's like, he doesn't want to, do you? And he's like, no. And then Dudley still isn't leaving. And the people who are there to help take them away are like wildly offended at how they're treating Harry. And then Harry's like, they actually think I'm a waste of space, but I'm used to it. And then Dudley quickly responds, I don't think you're a waste of space. saved my life. Oh my god. Oh my god, this hurts my back. But I can't bear to kick her off the chair. So I think I'm going to <laughs> read in bed for the rest of the night. But I'll see you tomorrow. been a couple of days since we last spoke so I ended up finishing the Deathly Hallows the day after I last checked in with you guys so I think that was Wednesday I finished this book and now it's Friday I'm so, so sorry I never checked in with you guys my memory disk got full and so I honestly was too lazy to change it if I'm being honest but I did finish this book 
I cried so many times. It was exceptionally good. I feel so robbed of the final battle scene because the conversation they had while circling each other while everyone was watching sounds extraordinary that would have been so good it was literally a made movie moment it would have been perfect but we didn't get that it was still an exceptionally good book i obviously this book is five stars this book is five stars now that i have finished the whole series let's do an overview these are all the, the harry potter books they do actually oh my god Woo, look. they do make a picture if you can see that they're flying on the dragon that happens in the last book okay let's start from the beginning harry potter and the sorcerer's stone this book was fantastic it was the perfect opening for this series. It introduces everything exceptionally well. And the movie adaptation is fair to the book. Very accurate. Very good. Five stars. Chamber of Secrets. This book is the one where Ginny gets involved with Tom Riddle's diary. Very good again. Honestly, I have nothing but good things to say about this series. This movie is also pretty fair to the book. I can't think of anything that was impertinent that was left out of the movie. But it was very good as well. Five stars. Five stars. Prisoner of Azkaban. This one was where things started to get a little darker, a little more sinister. Again, very interesting. Kind of upsetting that some things were left out. The thing, okay, what really upset me that was left out of the movie was when he makes his Patronus, his full Patronus with Stag, and he says prongs. That moment, crushed me oh my god i didn't even i never would have put it together just by watching the movies it was astounding it was the same one as his father that was his father's animagus i thought that was exceptional it made me cry this book was also very good five stars all okay all these books are five stars objectively they're not five star books but for me, they are all five stars. <laughs> okay. Goblet of Fire. This is where I have more complaints about the movies. This was so good. It was so good. I loved everything about it. The way everything happened was really exceptionally well done. Things that frustrated me about not making it into the movie, let's see, so many things, really, were the whole Winky storyline and how Dobby worked at Hogwarts. We never got to see that. We never got to see Hermione start SPEW, which was about, like, house elf rights, which... I mean, it makes complete sense with Hermione's character, but we never got to see it. How Barty Crouch Sr. was under the Imperious Curse this entire book. We never had any idea of that. Never saw it going on in the movie. We never got to see Hermione catch Rita Skeeter because she was an unregistered animagus and how she kept her in a jar. Never got to see that. But the book itself was astounding, and I have no complaints. This book, Order of the Phoenix. <sighs> this was infuriating. 
it was incredibly hard to read about umbridge and fudge and everyone doubting harry and dumbledore calling them crazy saying they didn't know what they were talking about all those things it pissed me off so much like i did not think i could get angrier and i continuously did and if you've seen the movie or read the book you know about the torture with the pens how they would write i must not he would write i must not tell lies and it would take the ink out of his blood and it would like be written on his hand it was so much worse in the book than it was in the movie like so much worse like it would describe blood dripping down his hand all these horrible things and we found out that umbridge was the one that sent the dementors to harry in the beginning of the book she reveals that and then she had the audacity to gaslight them in the hearing and being like i'm sorry are you suggesting that the ministry was responsible for the dementor attacks yes you were responsible and then you gaslit us into thinking it wasn't and then when Sirius died I had a meltdown like hysterically sobbing crying on the couch meltdown I could not keep it together I felt horrible <laughs> it was it was depressing to me it made me so sad anywho moving on five stars if that wasn't clear this book half-blood prince this was definitely my favorite book in the series it was perfect to me obviously there was stuff left out of the book out of the movie but it was so good it finally gave us Ginny's personality rather than her kind of just obsessing over Harry we got Hermione and Ron falling in love Harry and Ginny falling in love and then he broke up with her at the end which made me really upset but it made perfect sense given the circumstances it was so good this just verified in me the fact that the sixth movie is also the best because the book is the best in my opinion but this book was really good it was really interesting to see draco struggle the way he struggled in killing dumbledore five stars if that wasn't clear also this may be the romance book lover in me that is making this my favorite book, but Harry's jealousy in this book was scrumptious. It was so good. It added so much to the book and I loved it. Last one. Also, sobbed like a baby when Dumbledore died as well. Now, this book definitely had the most deaths definitely had me crying the most throughout the entirety of the book it was hard to get through this book so many people died Hedwig that was, that was honestly probably the worst one if I'm being honest if I'm reading a book if I'm watching a movie don't kill any animals all the pets live all the animals live just kill the people rather have that happen than have an animal die. Anywho, Hedwig died. Dobby died. That was hard. Fred died. Remus died. Tonks died. Snape died. That one was really hard. And I think... Oh god, everything about this book was so good. The fight scene in the end. Molly 
getting back at Lestrange for trying to kill Ginny. Oh, so good. And then Percy finally shows up again in this book after being like a in the past two. This book was so good. It was so good. I cried so much. Oh my god. And Snape's life, like his, what Harry sees in the Pensieve, Ponsieve, however it's pronounced, that was soul crushing. Oh my god. It was really hard. And then with with the resurrection stone that was really hard to read to see him with his mom and everything it was really hard oh my goodness. this whole book was so good it was so good again five stars but i think that's the end of this video I hope you enjoyed coming along with me in the Harry Potter series. This might be two parts, I don't know how long it's going to be, but hopefully not. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you stuck around this long, can't thank you enough. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more book-ish content, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!